Hello guys again and we're continuing with the videos in the King's Gambit. Tonight's topic will be King's Defense. It's the second move Queen H4 by Black. So after E3, 5F4, sixth move by popularity by Black players is Queen H4. This is not going to be a particularly like long lecture. So get ready for something really easy. And let me just tell you what the queen h4 uh, could be. First of all, it's a surprising move. It certainly forces you to play g3, in which case they bring the queen back on e7. Although I've seen in the practice uh, two more moves apart from queen e7. Those are either queen d8, in which case we gladly take the pawn on e5 and now we'd like to develop our knight on f3 and continue with our development. So when they sack the pawn, you always should gladly take that pawn on d6 and build up a strong center with d4. I don't want to give you anything more than this. Of course, you should develop both of your knights on f3 and c3, place your light square bishop on c4 or g2 and play short castle. White has, along with the pawn up, a better development, a much, much, much better control of the center and what is just so much better. Uh, then there is a move queen f6 instead of uh, queen d8. In that case, you capture with tempo, play knight c3, defending the pawn on e4. And when they go bishop before, in order to take and to give you check and to do the fork, on possibly on the king and the rook, you just go with knight f3. That's an important tempi. And after queen e7, I prepared a very interesting novelty for you. Uh, it wasn't um, actually nobody ever played the following move with a white pieces and it's bishop to h3. What's so special about bishop h3? Because if you play bishop g2, they could take on c3, take on e4, or even play at some point breaking in the center after bishop c3 with d5. Here, that's not a case, and you absolutely can consider uh, bishop h3 preventing any d5 ideas and uh, for the time being they have lots of problems with development after bishop c3 b takes c3 what do i like about this one any queen e4 you just play king f2 and go with a, a famous rookie one uh, a trick lining up queen on e4 and king on e8 so they just have to go with the knight c6 in which case you just complete your development i very much like uh, this uh, unusual position of the bishop on h3, which really helps uh, White's development and accelerates our initiative on both uh, king's side and in the center. Although, whoever plays king's defense, you just have to assume that these guys will go with queen e7. That's absolutely the main option. At the moment, they just threaten to take on f4 and to take this pawn on e4. So you just have to know how to react. You have to play knight c3 uh, over protecting pawn on e4 and threatening knight e5 also f takes c5 followed by knight f3. In the practice, black usually went for e takes f4. What if d6? d6 looks like a solid option, but this reminds me of some good positions where white just continues to play developing moves d3, knight f3, bishop g2, and short castle. When they play bishop e7, a4 to prevent b5, king h1 to put it into safety, and f5, because I'm willing to go with what? With h3, g4, g5, and this reminds me on Butcher the Sicilian, those close type Sicilian type of the King's Indian uh, attacks in and King's Indian attacks in e4 positions. That's a nice one. Uh, of course, you have a very promising attacking um, chances. Also, you're the one who's got initiative in this game and what has certainly a much better position. So after knight c3 takes f4 happen in all those games and now just like in other positions and that's why I, I won't go too deep into this variation but I'm just going to show you one game and absolutely the most precise move. So get ready to learn something uh, because it's very important if you play very accurately to get you're going to get almost a winning position out of the opening. When the play takes f4, you just go d4. Also, keep in mind 
that I've seen that the Kings defense, second Queen H4, was played even by a couple of GMs in tournament chess. So they just want to uh, throw you off from some uh, theoretical uh, and well-known path. So that's why you just have to be uh, ready for the following options. So when you play D4, they capture and you recapture. I like this recapturing by pawn yes we do have a weak isolated pawn on g3 and possibly we king on e1 but at the same time we have an open h file for the rook on h1 uh, they have to go with d5 that's the main move what happens if they just play logical knight f6 that logical move should be punished immediately with the bishop g5 because we threaten queen e2 we threaten e5 we threaten long castles and even in some uh, variations work on h4 to overprotect pawn on e4. In the case of d6, I have a specialty for you here. Knight goes back on f2 to defend the pawn on e4, solidify position of minor pieces around the king, which, which is going to uh, give this king on e1 like more of a safety. And then you just go with a bishop f4, queen d2, or queen e2, followed by long castles. Queen on e7 is unhappily placed there and is always going to be threatened once you play knight f2 with some knight e5 harassing this queen and the pawn on c7. After knight f6, knight f2, once again with the idea of bishop g5, queen e2, and long castles. And finally, those who play d5. d5 is the most logical move. You just play bishop f4. You don't care too much about the pawn on e4 because there is an obvious uh, and very nasty tactical trick behind d takes e4 you have knight d5 and the bishop on f4 and the knight on d5 threaten both queen e7 and pawn on c7 so they have to go with c6 and you go with queen d2 if they play knight f6 you always play long castle and you don't care about the pawn all you care about in these positions uh, that's the weak position of the king on e8 and even uh, weaker position of the queen that blocks the bishop on f8. Uh, I'm gonna show you one uh, game between uh, two 2200 guys played in Spain 1998. White played a very nice game and I checked it uh, on the engines it was absolutely fine. So look at this. D takes e4. White is at the moment two pawns down. Plays castles. This guy plays bishop g4 and looks like with the two pawns up, threatening this rook, hoping for knight d7, all he has to do is just to put the king side, uh, to play the queen side castle, put a king into safety, and everything would be done. Although at this point, this guy um, Bernabe Duran with the white pieces played knight takes e4. Of course, that black cannot take on e4 because of rook e1 in which case queen on e4 would be fallen so played bishop d1 knight takes the knight jumps d6 check bishop h3 check with tempo queen a5 check with tempo and a very very nice intermediary move queen f5 which threatens thanks to the battery checkmate in one move on c8 after white played bishop g4 uh, stops for the time being but it's probably he put all his hopes into this move do you know what's a funny thing here he threatens queen e1 here look at this one so you can easily by taking okay even if you take by queen or by bishop they have a possibility to play queen e1 queen d1 but in that case they would exchange everything take on d6 and they would be up an exchange so after bishop g4 this guy came up with knight f7 captured on g4 by bishop Interesting enough, once again, they can take on f7 because of queen c8 and just make sure to find the checkmate in this position. I see so many things. And after queen e1, plays bishop d1 and played knight e7. Although, white at this point played knight e6, king d8, and played queen h3. Absolutely a uh, great game by white. Threatens knight f7 fork. Uh, black is... Uh, behind in his development at the moment he's up an exchange but he couldn't stop all his threats and believe it or not he just resigned the game so all things considered if you have to remember and uh, if i have to come up with some important conclusions there uh after queen h4 king's defense they just create some weaknesses on the light squares on the king's side we gotta play g3 
after queen e7 they want to take on f4 you always have to play knight c3 rather than taking on e5 that's very important threatening knight e5 harassing that queen or just uh, going for f takes e5 and knight f3 when they take you gotta play d4 building up a strong center especially now considering the fact that the knight on c3 defends pawn on e4 when they take you take because you're happy to have an open file and when they play d5 bishop f4 followed by queen d2 and long castles that's all you have to remember about this position finally if anyone ever goes with the bishop g4 threatening this bishop and hoping for knight e7 and uh, soon and um, queenside castle you just go with the knight e4 they can't take it because of rookie one and you just want to go with the knight e6 going after the weekend hope that you enjoyed in this classic refutation of the king's defense and wish you the best of luck with it Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.